Aloha, and welcome to another episode of Outside Hawaii. My name is Jen Boniza. On this week's show, we'll be joining the Punahou class of 1959 on a field trip into the Waianae Mountains. They'll be planting native trees in the Honu'uli'uli Preserve. The Iliahi Foundation, which is being led by several Punahou alumni, has formed a volunteer partnership of sorts with the Nature Conservancy of Hawaii and is helping to restore a portion of the forest within the preserve. The Iliahi Foundation's help has really been a big plus to the Conservancy's restoration efforts in Honu'uli'uli. Rare and endangered native plants are regularly being put into the forest as a result of this collaboration. This story is really about several dedicated and passionate people who have volunteered a huge portion of their personal time. In the last four years, they have literally invested thousands of man-hours in the preservation and restoration of the Honu'uli'uli Preserve. On this day, they gathered with fellow 59ers to celebrate, savor, and reinvest themselves in this important piece of work. Hono Uli Uli lies within the Waianae Mountains. Its nearly 4,000 acres is being preserved and restored by the Nature Conservancy of Hawaii. An enormous challenge on its own, the work of the Conservancy would be much harder without volunteers. Pauline Sato is the Oahu director for the Nature Conservancy. On this morning, Pauline, her staff, and Iliahi Foundation members are preparing bag lunches for visiting members of the Punahou class of 1959. The real beauty about groups like the Iliahi Foundation is that they are very passionate people who are, are very you know, concerned about the environment and want to put their concern to action. And they, they do it. They you know, put in the long hours in planning as well as executing their um, activities. And it's, it's inspiring because for those of us who do this for a living, you know, we do it day in and, and day out. And it's a passion for us too. But it's especially rewarding when we're connected with people who do this on a volunteer basis. And, you know, they may be retired or they may already have another job, but they're putting in that extra time. And it, um, it makes all of our work a lot easier when we work together. Aloha, everybody. Hey, Frank. <laughs> Come on over, we get started. I'm John Larson, for several of you who might not know me. Uh, back in Punahou, I was a skinny kid with, with a lot of hair. But, so if you don't recognize me, I'll forgive you. And you all know uh, my partner uh, of many, many years, uh, Jimbo Haley, who is uh, really the brains and the muscle here. He supervises the volunteers, runs our nurseries, grows the plants, finds the seeds, and supervises the volunteers and the outplanting and the maintenance of where you're going today so uh, uh, it's really his heart and vision that have really carried us all so um, what uh, we're going to do here uh, very quickly today the the, the, the the vision is that we have all had and shared is Ona Uli Uli and you'll be hearing a lot of details from Pauline and Jim later today but there's 4,000 acres leased from Campbell and the goal of the Nature Conservancy is to uh, really create a safe place where native species can thrive, plants, the, f the birds, snails, um, what have you. Former Punahou 59er classmates John Larson and Jim Haley are founding members of the Iliahi Foundation. They got together about five years ago, shared their visions for Hawaii, and then formed the nucleus of this grassroots volunteer group. Our mission today is to plant 59 native trees and uh, we have 220 now growing and our goal was to get to 350 by our 50th reunion um, and we'll be a uh, long ways along that today. 
fundraising drives, the good old-fashioned networking, and sweat equity has contributed to the successful partnership between the Nature Conservancy of Hawaii and the Iliahi Foundation. The foundation, for lack of a better term, adopted a grove within the Honouliuli Preserve, and for the last couple of years, they've been planting native trees and maintaining their restoration efforts. They've also contributed to the construction of two shade houses. Rare and common native plants are nurtured here until they are ready to be outplanted into the preserve. Without the efforts of volunteers, the challenges of restoring and preserving Hawaii's fragile forests would be difficult at best. We suspect the volunteers are optimists. They wouldn't be sweating bullets or swatting mosquitoes if they didn't believe in their work. They hope to set a positive example to others so that their children and grandchildren can live in a Hawaii with healthy forests and mountains. The to-do list is endless at Honouliuli. With limited resources, the work of the Nature Conservancy is challenging to say the least. In a very large way, community awareness, involvement, and the work of volunteers is critical for success here. I want to talk about the four whys that we're here, why, why we're doing this. The first one is that it's an experiment. Today's experiment is one, we have never outplanted this late in the year uh, because we're going into the teeth of summer. But maybe it's going to work. You know, again, we're challenging conventional wisdom, and, and you are doing that in that respect. The other reason is that we're creating a seed bank. Um, as these trees grow to maturity, they're going to start uh, producing seed, which other groups, 10 years from now, can come to a, a convenient place and collect the seed that they might want to start a similar project 20, 30, 40 years from now. Um, the third reason that we're here is we're creating a critical mass, a critical mass of indigenous plants, so that they can propagate naturally. Finally, uh, is the fourth reason that we're doing this, it's, and this gets a little woo-woo, uh, a little airy-fairy, but um, the, the truth is that, you know, this could be a cultural model. A as you look around, there's Norfolk pines, there's uh, Chinese ban uh, banyan trees. The only indigenous plant that was here when we got here was kukui. And here we are, we're, we're, we're putting the natural extending the, 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 the respect of indigenous plants to put them back in and in and amongst the aliens. So maybe we can show that coexistence, you know, that, that everybody can work together if we work together, so to speak. So four, four different things we do. Someday, the kukui, koa, and aali'i trees being planted might restore this portion of Honouliuli to near its original state. The foundation is also helping to preserve some incredibly rare native plant species that are and were only found in the Waianae Mountains. Anyway, let's go inside and I can show you the two different structures and how we designed them. One of them you can see is darker than the other. So we started off in this darker one. So this is the Cyania grimsiana, subspecies Obatai, named after John Obata. Um, the Hawaiian name is Haha. -ha. And so it, when it flowers, it has a curved uh, flower, and the you know, insects or birds with a curved bill could pollinate it. And um, it's related to this one back here, which is the Cyania pinnatifida. So you can kind of see the resemblance, you know, with the leaves. Um, this one is one of the really, really rare plants. In fact, there was only one known plant in the preserve in the whole world, left in the world. And we knew that, and we said, boy, you know, if that one goes, then the whole species is wiped off the face of the planet. So um, people were collecting seeds, but it's not like it was flowering all the time. So technically, it's extinct in the wild, because the natural wild one is gone. Even if we replant these, it's still a different gen generation. And they're, you know, so it's one of those that we caught in time. Um, but yet, the gene pool is very small, right, because it's all from that one plant. 
Nature Conservancy staff has outplanted sites within the preserve with these endangered plants. On a regular basis, they collect data, seeds, and tissue samples so that a continuous supply of new plants can be germinated and regenerated. The endemic Happy Face Spider is one of the beneficiaries of the Conservancy's efforts. John Larson and the Iliahi Foundation are proud but humble benefactors. They do it for Hawaii, their children, and themselves. With the teamwork with Malama Hawaii and, and uh, Punahou School and Chaminade, and we were able to uh, bring a number of students from Kapolei High School up here with some of our funds um, last year. And so uh, we're able to raise monies now as our own credibility grows. Um, uh, and we're able to put, put money back into programs that will make this program more and more sophisticated as time goes on. So thank you from, from, from our foundation um, to the Nature Conservancy. And we know you, you have set the example for so many groups, uh, other groups that w work with you uh, up here. And I think your idea of allowing individual volunteer groups to come in and to create groves of their own trees. In time, the groves will grow together and we'll have a whole forest up here. So that's really the way that, uh, that we'll reforest up here is, is bringing together the, these groves and we're very happy to have our, our grove here. Mahalo and thank you for joining us on another Outside Hawaii. Many thanks go out to Pauline Sato of the Nature Conservancy Hawaii, the Iliahi Foundation, Paul Lamb, Servco, and the Punahou Class of 1959. Please join us again for another journey through the Pacific for more knowledge and adventure. Ahui ho, aloha, and malama pono. <laughs>